back in 2017, uh, when I look into this, I found we don't have a device which is portable like smartphone, but it's also give me my full workspace wherever I go. To solve that problem, we choose glasses as a medium. That's one of the reasons we made a full computer in this form factor. This is like a little bigger than an Airport Pro case. So I learned everything, especially building hardware, uh, taking it to mass production and launching the uh, in, in the consumer space. And also I learned how to manage people, you know, especially how, how I could I should not make this kind of mistakes when I make the new new company. The good thing for with that experience and the relations with the multiple vendors and all, which really, really helped me to build Nemo. You could not imagine, right? We survived the company all these six years. Uh, and we made the product with just $1 million as an investment. When we reached this space, now we are getting really good uh, interest from investors and uh, the business model, the clarity, everything is like extremely good. Now we are getting really good feedback. Welcome to a new episode of XR and AI Spotlight, the show where we give the stage to creative technologists, entrepreneurs, and innovators at the intersection between XR and AI. My name is Gabriele Romagnoli and I'm your host. And today we have with us Rohil. Rohil loves design, dreaming of new ideas and making them a reality. He is the founder and CEO of Nemo Planet, a new device designed with the vision to create the world's best productivity computer that fits in the pocket and enables anyone to work from anywhere. He currently has his hands on all Nemo glasses design, building Nemo OS, the business, so it is a great pleasure to have him here. Stick around to learn how affordable wearable augmented reality is going to enhance human productivity, what it takes for a founder to build a hardware startup twice, how Nemo is building an AI that make every user a power user and the meaning and importance of focus when shipping polished user experiences. But before we get into it, I wanted to thank the sponsor for today, Cognitive 3D, who made this episode possible. Cognitive 3D is an analytic platform to improve how organizations can analyze user behavior in VR and AR and turn the findings into actionable insight. Cognitive 3D has an handy SDK that integrates easily in Unity and Unreal. Data are collected and displayed in 3D contextually to help you improve user engagement and retention. Whether you are designing training or simulation, running consumer research, or creating games and entertainment content, Cognitive 3D will change the way you track and learn from your data. Head to Cognitive3D.com to learn more. And now, let's roll the title and welcome Rohil on stage. Look, I usually like to dive directly into the biggest questions. And the first question will be, what do you think is needed right now to make augmented reality for productivity a reality? Oh, yeah. Uh, so if, if you take an example of existing computing devices from desktop to laptop, iPad, smartphone. So all these categories, one of the core reasons is people want more portability. From desktops, mm -hmm. people want more portability. That's the reason we have laptops. But uh, from there, even more portability that's needed. That's the reason we have iPads and smartphones. So when we look into this space, when we make the device portable and more and more portable, we are compromising productivity or the things that we can do more because the screen size is shrinking down, right? Yeah, so it becomes more of a consumption tool other than a production tool. Right, right. So back in 2017, uh, when I look into this, I found we don't have a device which is portable like smartphone, but it's also give me my full workspace wherever I go, right? So that's the 
whole idea that we getting started back in 2017 to solve that problem, we choose glasses as a medium. Just like we have headphones. We had big speakers a couple of years back. Now we have the small sitting close to your ear. We are getting much better experience without carrying a big device, which is the same thing with the, uh, the display and the glasses. Because it's sitting closer, we can deliver rich experience without carrying a big device. Right. So it's then like I hear that it seems like scale and finding uncompromise, an uncompromised solution to deliver productivity in the right size. Exactly. Exactly. So when we talk about productivity, uh, which is clear, people need bigger screens or multiple screens, mm -hmm. right? With the existing technologies, if we have bigger screens, that compromise mobility. So that's the that's for you know AR or smart glasses going to play a big role. Uh, we can make it much sleeker and powerful. At the same time, it can give multiple and bigger screens. Ultimately, mm -hmm. that allow people to work from anywhere without compromising their productivity. Uh, but the problem when we started was one, the hardware was not mature, no proper optical systems or micro displays and not even an operating system or a software to provide this experience. So we start building the glasses along with a custom operating system uh, with tailored and well optimized for this multi-screen productivity angle. So this is fantastic because I think it's one, two of the key things that we're going to discuss being also the operating system and the optics. But I would like to take a step back, right? And maybe you can tell us a bit more about Nemo in general, like how does the computing part works? How does the glasses work? Uh, what about connecting it to a keyboard, a mouse or another computer? I mean, how does this whole productivity package all work together? Absolutely. Uh, so when we when we actually started, uh, we tried to put everything inside the glass. Uh, we put all the batteries, processor, display, everything into the glasses and made it like fully fully standalone glasses. Uh, and we announced that in 2022. And we did a lot of demo. We met a lot of people. Uh, uh, we, we did demo and collect their feedback. See, one of the the core thing, especially in the wearable space, is that if the device is not comfortable to use, you know, whatever technology we have, people not gonna use, I mean, regular people, they, they hate it, right? So when we learned that, our goal was to make the glasses extremely lightweight, right? And the same time, the core focus that we have, which is ability to carry everything in their pocket, we should not compromise that as well. So that's one of the reason we made a full computer in this form factor. This is like a little bigger than an Airport Pro case, right? And this connect with Nemo glasses. We are also working on a new strategy, which this one enable to support other glasses also in this space, right? Who are head they have lightweight AR classes. And, but, but the goal is to create this as a platform with this spatial computing, which is capable of running thousands of productivity apps, uh, which is including Android apps, web apps, Unity apps, inside our OS. And the OS is well designed for delivering this multi-screen experience, right? And now, the input is one of the biggest part, right? For especially for productivity. So we look into two scenarios. One, something like core productivity that people want to sit and work productively. And the second one, especially when they want to refer something, relax and review something. So in those cases, they can use this as a mouse mm. and trackpad. So we call Nemo Core. And this enable I'll say air mouse and trackpad. So the user can you know, simply use navigate and interact with it. And the second one, people can also use their uh, let me show you. Keyboards like this. <laughs> right. Right. So this enable with the trackpad and keyboard, which directly connect with Nemo Core 
and they can do the protective work, right? So this is the two scenarios we want to start with because these are familiar to people, but we have more in the roadmap. That's something that we need to replace this, which give more ultimate productivity and portability experience for the customers. So since you mentioned this is a very good point, right? Productivity is different, a different moment. I mean, you can be productive in different, in different way. Uh, right. How is the, the overall user experience? So uh, let's imagine that I'm doing some productive work, like, for example, checking email, writing a document, uh, or these kind of tasks, right? right? From the moment that I take out a keyboard uh, and, and I put on the glasses, is everything already connected with each other? Uh, so how does the user actually get into this? Well, yeah, so uh, imagine they are just setting up the first time. Uh, when the OS boot into, it will have a pop-up, which enable them to connect with their existing Bluetooth devices. And they can connect that using Nemo core, mouse and trackpad and navigate and connect with any external device. And once that is done, whenever you reopen Nemo, it will automatically connect and you can start using it, right? And I, I usually carry, this is my in my one pocket and the glass in the car in another one. And I can, you know, sit anywhere, just take it out and put the glass on, done. I guess are working. Clear. Clear. And, you know, I actually, maybe for people that haven't seen it or haven't stumbled on the several announcements online, yeah. on Forbes, on other about the product, yeah. I've got a little... Uh, the, the little video that you guys have made and I would like to share it to anybody. Uh, so let me get one minute 20 so that we can show the video out. Let's So I think from the video, there were a couple of things that also struck me that are not necessarily the core value proposition of many of these products. And that is the operating system. Exactly. That it, it is kind of like an afterthought. Yeah, and some man is going to figure that out. But we have built the glasses and, <laughs> and then we're going to get the operating system. And that seems to be one of the core value. Uh, right. And... and, and let's say, things that you put a lot of work into. Maybe, wh why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, yeah. Um, so when we, when we started to building the hardware, uh, one of the problems was that it was no software that we can deliver this seamless experience, right? So that's one of the reasons we started building the OS. And in all these years, uh, that's one of the ideas we put tons of effort to optimize it in a way that can run all the native apps, including like Android, Unity, web. So we have to build the custom rendering system or optimized system underneath of the OS. And we build this top of Android open source, right? We use the base Android open source and we customized everything, including the windowing system. We built a new, uh, really optimized rendering system and we made everything studio. So one of the core reasons was when we talk to people, people need the flexibility to bring the screen closer or wider based on their work priority, right? So 
to achieve that, we need to add depth to every element or every app. So the, the new system that we built inside the OIS, which enabled enable anyone to make uh, a 3D or studio app with depth into every element. And using our new SDK, which is gonna roll out next year, it's super easy when their existing Android apps, they can easily convert into 3D and that's cue the depth. Uh, you can also run a studio movie inside Nemo workspace. So for example, when I am, if you have like, you know, six screens and one of the screen, I can put a studio movie and another one other 2D apps like Excel or web browser or anything, right? So we made this to give flexibility to scale even in the future for uh, mixed reality and more deep AR experiences. Because we have the depth, now we have, you know, in, in the future, once we have a camera and we can detect the real world plane, I can literally put the 2D apps or objects in that specific depth in the real world, right? So, and, and the challenge was like optimizing this experience to run on this small computing power, right? We don't have too much battery or we don't have a space to put too many components, right? So we have to optimize the OS to achieve that level of uh, experience uh, without compromising uh, the, the form factor or the power consumption at all. So I'm super happy like the team put tons of effort all these years to get this uh, in a super smooth way. So even though right now we have three DOF tracking, uh, the rendering of these multiple screens are super smooth because of this optimization that we did. Uh, still, we are working on it to make more and more stable, uh, especially in different conditions, like while people are traveling and all these things, uh, which is something is going on. Uh, and this can also scale into six DAW uh, once you have the sensors in the hardware. I just wanted to have a quick break to remind you that the recording of these episodes and many more great conversations with incredible experts are available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Just head over to my profile or the episode description, open up the link in bio, and pick your platform of choice. And now, let's get back to the show. So, and since you brought up a good point, basically, how is the digital content position in the physical space in terms of uh, anchoring, in terms of relative to the user? Uh, how does it know where it should stay, how it's positioned? Uh, how does that work right now? Uh, yeah, so right now it's purely 3 off. We track the uh, head mm -hmm. movement. And uh, so once the screen is placed in one place and based on the head movement, we will lock into that one, one specific space. The reason we are not adding six stuff or a bunch of other things right now, because I want to make the glasses extremely lightweight in the first generation. And I'm seeing the future, we're gonna have more solutions, which is low power, small form factor, which ultimately help us to bring six stuff in a small and sleek form factor glasses. Uh, but for the regular users right now, they are completely okay with, you know, the problem that we are solving, right? Giving them freedom to access multiple screens, right? And to do that, 3 off is good enough, and they, when they turn their head, they can access the screens. And we are also trying to optimize that experience just like they have multiple monitors in their uh, desktop or the table, and they naturally move their head left or right to see mm -hmm. other screens uh, when they work. So uh, the calibration we are matching towards that, so the user does not need to turn too much the and they hurt their neck uh, to, to see the screens. Uh, that uh, along with the, the depth enable them to give better perception of presence of the screens in the real world. And yeah, that's that's the phase one that we want to step with and uh, uh, we want to do more in the future. Perfect. So, and so if we imagine as the primary use, I'm in my desk, I'm in an environment, right? Where I have control, I can get my desk and I can get work done, right? At being very productive with different screens at different depth, uh, checking videos and, and all these things all at the same time. Now, uh, when we look at the challenges about bringing these to different places or different environments, one of the one that comes often is, for example, the environmental brightness, right? Yeah. Uh, how 
because you also talked about optics. How do you actually deal with that? Um, so the first generation, just like you know, other glasses in the market like the XTL or Rocket or any other glasses, uh, there is a shade in the outside mm -hmm. uh, which cut down too much lights come, that coming from outside. Uh, that's the, the uh, easiest way to start with. And the phase two going to be uh, electrochromic lens, uh, which electronically we can adjust the dimness and cut down the lights that are coming from outside. Uh, and also see the future, there are new optical technologies and better, uh, I mean, better optics without too much light leak and better brightness, uh, micro LEDs and LED displays. So this, all these uh, technologies are coming up and it's growing in the space, right? Uh, which definitely add more value. And ultimately uh, we don't need to have this uh, dark shade in the future, uh, but it will take a little more time. But to start with, there's a shade. Okay, okay. The one thing oh, that I've also seen and caught my attention during this uh, the little trailer uh, was uh, you mentioning about Nemo GPT. Uh, yeah. Can, can there isn't much uh, said about that? Uh, maybe you can help us understand a little bit more to what extent yeah. uh, Nemo is is leveraging uh, AI as part of the productivity suite. Right. So the introduction of Nemo GPTs is, I mean, pretty simple to start with. The idea that we have is that, uh, for example, if I'm in a LinkedIn app and I click the post button to create a new post, right? And LinkedIn app will give an input box for me to type the new post. So right there, I can ask, uh, create a LinkedIn post about my uh, maybe last mm -hmm. talk or something like that, right? And if I hit control space, the, the pop-up will open with chat GPT result, right? So the idea is like from any app, uh, where do I have that input box? Right there, I can access chat GPT and get the support, right? So that's the phase one. The goal we have is to automate some of these uh, workflows. In the future, uh, for example, if somebody installs a new app, so the system will get to know everything about that new app, all the functions, features, all the shortcuts and everything. Now imagine there's a category of user which is called power user, right? The power users are mostly, they know everything about the specific app, all the shortcuts and all the features and everything. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people, they don't know all these things, right? They learn, they find out the shortcuts, all these things. So now, with the integration of a system support, I can ask to do something in stuff I'm learning all the shortcuts and everything about that specific app, which help people to reduce the inputs that they want to give and ultimately reduce the, the need of do, doing too much things uh, to get the task done and become a power user without learning everything about that specific application. So the idea is like how we can make every user as a power user with the support of Trinity AI and its deep integration with the OS. And since we have the full control with the operating system, there's turns we can do. Right, so because this is another interesting point because there are apps that help you to generate content of different form, right? Video or, or text. Uh, but not much have seemed, to be honest, about helping us be more productive in a sense of yeah. helping us streamline and accelerate. So there are a lot of these stars and idea, oh, generate uh, three variants for this post. And there is a yeah. lot of it. But how can you become more productive? How can AI also learn, I suppose, from the way you're using certain apps and, and certain functions that maybe could be accelerated by specific right. shortcut that they could suggest? Right, right. So, right. I, I do have um, another question is a bit taking a step uh, back, right? Uh, many people say that building a hardware company is extremely challenging. Uh, yes. what, what can you tell us about that um, in the sense, what are the lessons that you have, that you have learned? Okay, so uh, the... the... One of the things I always used to hear from hardware founders is that if they, if they started a hardware company first time, 
they're never gonna do the second hardware company. <laughs> got burned it's forever. Uh, but but uh, I really like the hardware piece and the software piece uh, and integrating together. And one of the biggest reason is like the kind of design element involved in the hardware and integration with the software deeply with the hardware, right? So this is my second hardware company. The first one I built back in 2014 and we so designed it. Just based... <laughs> Say that again? <laughs> so you survived the first one. You are here doing it. Again. You must be very special then. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, you know, uh, we build the hardware, you know, the first company I built a product, it was, well, it was called uh, Nea, uh, it's a ring that uh, just replaced smart ring, uh, used to control other IoT devices and smart devices using simple gestures. We mass produced from Japan around 7,500 units and launched in the US market with Brookstone, Bloomingdale's Target, Sky Mall, Selfridges in the UK, uh, when we shipped close to 5,000 units through all the channels. But uh, this is in 2015 during Christmas. But 2016, I lost the company control. Uh, uh, I, I lost the inventory with uh, two other team members in the company. Uh, so the mistake I did, I gave out all the access manufacturing and everything to those people. And uh, when, when they got full control, they took the company control. So I learned everything, especially building hardware, uh, Taking into mass production and launching the year in, in the consumer space, and also I learn how to manage people. You know, especially how how I could I should not make this kind of mistakes when I make the new new company. Uh, but the good thing for with that experience and the relationship with the multiple vendors and all, which really really helped me to build Nemo. Uh, you could not imagine, right? We survived the company all these six years. Uh, and we made the product with just $1 million as an investment, right? It's super, super, super hard. But when we reach this phase, now we are getting really good uh, interest from investors and uh, the business model, the clarity, everything is like extremely good. Now we are getting really good feedback. Uh, but, you know, one of the core reasons we could survive all these years when I got really good team, they support me in the, all this journey. And the second one, I got really good vendors. Uh, they also support me in the, on this journey, especially making hardware. You know, even making small prototype, uh, it's extremely costly. And uh, uh, and to make it like a super small form factor, which is much uh, expensive compared to big, you know, from uh, size devices. Uh, but the the biggest learning is that focus. Uh, Without a sharp focus that we have, we could not achieve this, this stage, right? And the entire team is completely focused on this one thing. Uh, that's one of the reasons you don't see uh, any other fancy things on, on Nemo glasses. You know, just a display, give you multi-screen, that's it. So that's the best way we can start with. And uh, definitely we can do more. We have tons of, we have 10 year roadmap to do more. Uh, but we, we need super sharp focus to build a hardware company. That's that's one of my biggest lessons. Right, because I mean, focus sometimes is kind of broad, and I know it's kind of like counterintuitive. But when we say so, comp, everybody needs to be focused. Could you maybe like, what was really for what allowed you to to stay focused, right, and build a product, launch it to the market with just one million of investment because that's what it is about yeah what is it allow you to do that what kind of decision compromises or how do you manage the team what did that imply sure uh see we used to get uh if we take an example of uh features like eye tracking hand tracking adding six stuff adding speaker adding microphone uh, adding camera for more AR experiences that need for different mm -hmm. enterprise use cases. Uh, so all these things uh, we can add maybe, right? I'll say technology standpoint uh, that we are getting from multiple customers for different requests. So if we are trying to add with, uh, you know, trying to do all these things uh, and uh, trying to satisfy every individual customers, they want all these features then we don't have a focus, right? 
we cannot get into every customer in the initial phase. Uh, but the best way to go with uh, look into what is really important for the the vision that we have, which is we want to we want to we want to put a powerful workspace in people's pocket then that help them to work from anywhere, right? To put a powerful workspace in their pocket uh, that enable them to be productive. The phase one, none of other matters, you know, sensors and everything is not a big matter. The first phase is to give them the initial experience of accessing those multi multiple screens, right? Even, even the glass and this computer or delivering this spatial multi-screen is super new for every regular user. You know, <laughs> there it's extremely, extremely new. So there is a big chunk of learning curve for regular users to put the glasses on and access these things. So we need to crack that very neatly in the simplest way. So once they are used into that, we can add more sensors. Hey, next version of Nemo 2, you got this six stuff so you can walk around, right? Or you got a eye tracking that maybe you enable you a biometric uh, authentication. So all these things come in the phase two, three, four, five, uh, which is super easy for people to adopt. And of course, based on then all the learnings on the field from pushing the first product out, oh, yeah. right? I mean, I mean, even now when we uh, uh, when we ship to a couple of customers, some of the scenarios uh, we as a developer always think inside a circle, right? But when we ship to those people, they use like crazy. <laughs> it's like you know, giving that kind of feedback, getting that kind of feedback is extremely valuable for us, and uh, we are we are doing that and fixing files and releasing OT updates. Uh, with those those fixes, I mean, that is something. Uh, it's so hard to, uh, especially as a small team, to identify and fix this fast without shipping. Yeah. So the landscape is heating up. I mean, we know that there are multiple players on the market that they're doing this in different ways, either in mixed reality, either in augmented reality. So how do you see this market, these opportunities evolve, let's say in the next one to three years? Uh, right. Uh, see, if we uh, check this landscape, there, there are going to be two categories to start with, two categories of devices. One, of course, the VR and more devices that's capable of tons of things, immersive experiences, uh, a much bigger field of view and give you big you know, canvas. The compromise is going to be the price form factor. There's not much mobility because the device's technology is still early and all the sensors and everything is big, which need high compute intensive processor and uh, storage battery, all these things. So the device is so big. So, the, so another category, which is kind of Nemo, XREL, and other, other companies uh, trying to make the glasses extremely lightweight and portable so people can carry around in their, in their pocket. So even inside that, the productivity is a separate space, and mm. which, is, which need more care, especially not, not care, maybe more optimized towards that specific focus. Uh, which involve different input interfaces or interactions. How do we manage these multiple applications? Uh, how do we organize this, the, the structure? How easily they can navigate between these multiple uh, app slots or apps? So a bunch of things that we need to take care, especially in the productivity angle to get uh, people to use it like super easy or simple, minimal way. Uh, in, if you take that productivity space uh, with mobility, uh, there's no other device, nothing, including Nemo. You know, it's nothing that people can just go and pick it from any store, right? It's still early, uh, but I'm seeing like uh, we we start shipping to enterprise customers now, and also some individual customers, and uh, we are expecting to getting to mass production very soon after our uh, Series A, and next one or two years, uh, there are going to be multiple players in this space that specifically focusing productivity. 
uh, and there will be choices for people. So some of the companies, they are focusing more productivity with more immersive experiences, which compromise the form factor. Some people, uh, they are approaching different way with a little more laptop kind of form factor with the glasses give, give an experience. So uh, people will get multiple uh, choices to buy uh, from the market, but, but still it's super early. And one of the core area that we are adding value is with the user experience from the hardware uh, with a with a super optimized and super designed operating system. So everything that you see about Nemo should be like super well designed. Uh, even 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 the the computing platform, you know, is super small and super easy to use. Super easy, something like a you know, it's not a device, right? Whenever you hold, <laughs> it's super uh, nice to hold and use. Uh, and when you look into our OS, uh, we made like super minimal, uh, the interactions are super easy to use, even navigation from one workspace to another. Uh, and every part of the, the design interaction, we're trying to make unique. Uh, for example, if you deeply look, look into the, the OS video that we released, the simple things like the toggle button, right, that enable options. Even that toggle button we made unique, something that you cannot see anywhere in the any other platforms. And the the loading animation, we made it unique. Uh, so that I think, you know, different platforms like Apple, that's uh, one of the area, they also put a lot of effort to make unique interactions and all. Uh, so, something that we are providing as a new experience to the user. Uh, you should also ex expect a fresh uh, interface or fresh animations and l every little things, right? So we put a lot of effort in those small things to make it unique and at the same time get a, give a better experience for the customers. So that's one thing people can expect from Nemo, not only from now, all the new generations that we're gonna make. Uh, we make everything super unique, fresh, and well-designed uh, from hardware to the software. Rohil, I think that what you have said makes a lot of sense, especially so in people talk about the hardware, they show the hardware, but it's like the whole package that makes sense. It's the whole user experience, yeah. it's the whole experience yeah. within the experience that matters and that also makes people to stick to get one job done instead of many half done at the compromise of something else right so i can i can totally see how these the this focus on a purpose and on also the experience within that uh is is it, it, can, it can certainly be like something to attract and retain those people that are starting to discover this new way to be productive as you mentioned anywhere right, right. nice so i'm gonna wait for one of one name on my desk here soon okay <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> thank you very much for here it was a real pleasure thank you thank you thank you really much for listening in and remember to head to YouTube, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts and check out more insightful conversation revolving around XR and AI. And if you really like the show, please leave a review on Spotify and Apple Podcasts or a thumbs up on YouTube. It really helps me keep doing this and shine the spotlight on the latest and greatest advancement in XR and AI. Till next time. Mm -hmm.